Chapter 1. Wishes and Dreams Brenda Sheffield watched the plentiful snowflakes fall to the ground. The blanket of snow lay softly on the front lawn of Sheffield Bed and Breakfast in a pristine panorama. Early December was at last graced with beauty. Phyllis Lindsay stood beside Brenda, the owner of the Bed and Breakfast, and took in the beauty. I hope the day of our weddings looks like this, don't you, Brenda? It would make for a lovely day for sure. The housekeeper and her boss planned to marry the loves of their lives in a double ceremony on Christmas Eve. Both anticipated the big day just like young brides-to-be would, even though they were both well past their twenties. Age didn't mar their excitement. In fact, the entire atmosphere of the bed and breakfast was revved up and animated at the prospect of the upcoming celebrations. I'm going to make some hot chocolate, Brenda said. If you will, find Allie. The three of us can start sorting through the Christmas decorations. I'm glad we finally got the Thanksgiving and fall decor put away until next year. Now we just have to sort through the enormous amount of Christmas stuff. Brenda left for the kitchen while Phyllis located Allie, the young reservationist. A short time later, the three of them settled comfortably in chairs in the sitting room, where a fire crackled in the fireplace and made the room seem cozy, in contrast to the snow-covered landscape outside. Brenda was reminded of the many times in the past, when she and her mother sipped hot chocolate on cold winter days in Michigan. Her mother always made sure they greeted her truck driver father with steaming hot chocolate when he came in from the cold weather. Tim Sheffield always protested that he preferred coffee, but he willingly accepted the sweet hot beverage without complaint every time. There are still four large Christmas trees down in storage, Allie said. Do you want me to ask Michael to bring them up? I don't think so, Allie. I've been thinking there is something about those pre-lit artificial trees that just doesn't appeal to me. It doesn't feel right. This year, we are going to have the real thing. Allie grinned happily to hear this, and Phyllis smiled as she took another sip of her hot chocolate. Brenda had thought the plan through a little and shared it with them. We'll take the truck and go to that huge tree farm at the edge of town and pick out perfect trees. The other women agreed with excitement. I love the smell of real evergreens, Allie said. My mother won't have anything but the real thing at home, or even in her bakery sweet greets. Just the mention of those delectable sweets of hers makes my mouth water, Phyllis said. Hope Williams is the best when it comes to baking. Brenda hopped up and went back into the kitchen. Her mouth curved from ear to ear when she came back. Hope just sent these muffins over. She's testing special new Christmas recipes. That one is cranberry walnut. This one is gingerbread with candied oranges. And I think this one is eggnog spice. Try one. No more encouragement was needed, and everyone quickly selected a treat to try. All right now, Brenda said. Let's start digging into these boxes. This afternoon, we will go tree hunting. After a couple of hours, the decorations were decided. They had unearthed some beautiful antique treasures that had been collected by her uncle during his ownership of the bed and breakfast, as well as newer ones that had been gifts from guests or bought at local craft fairs. Brenda refilled their cups of hot chocolate and then opened the door to the wide, covered porch. She sighed. I loved the snows in Michigan, but there is something really special about a New England snowfall. Phyllis pulled her tweed sweater tighter. She had grown up in Sweet Fern Harbor, and she still thought the same about this part of the country. Every season displayed its own beauty, and she savored nature almost as much as she did William Pendleton, the man of her dreams. Brenda noticed her sudden pensive change. Phyllis's eyes appeared far away. Brenda moved closer to her friend. What is it, Phyllis? I can tell something is bothering you.